What's good, YouTube? It's your boy TSO Sage, and I'm back with another video. Ah, the Toronto Raptors. I guess everything's bigger in Canada. All jokes aside, though, Toronto is certainly a well coached team with underrated depth. And two years ago, they literally won the title. So, how are they already down terrible? Well, let's find out. So, without further ado, if you guys like the video, don't forget to like the video and let's get right to it. Okay, so how did the former NBA champions get here? Well, being honest here, because Raptors fans know it too, they pushed all their chips to the table on that championship run. And it definitely work therefore it's worth it i've only been told by one person in my entire lifetime ever that they value the chance to win rings later down the line rather than winning a ring right now and i'm sure now i'm gonna see a bunch of those people in the comment section below but that logic is very very questionable i'm not gonna hold you it's literally a fucking ring ticket but outside of random debate the actuality of the situation is that's what toronto did they ended up trading away demar de rosen the first round pick that turned into keldon johnson and Jakob polo pedal how the fuck you say that nigga name for Kawhi Leonard. Oh, and Daniel Green. Okay, I'm not even going to do that. Daniel Green was solid at the time. So with adding those two to a roster with Mark Gasol, Serge Ibaka, Kyle Lowry, Fred Van Fleet, Pascal Siakam was emerging. This team wasn't just built to be good. It was beat to beat specific teams in the Eastern Conference. The same Eastern Conference that just lost LeBron James. So at the time, it was a wide open window for a lot of teams. The team was good. The timing was great. The coaching was fantastic. The management was somehow even better. And everything just came came together and even though they knew it was short-term success i guarantee you they would do it 10 times over even if they knew their future and the future wasn't shocking at all we all knew Kawhi leonard was going to leave and once a guy like that leaves your franchise along with danny green who was a good 3 and d wing most of your older talent simply didn't want to be there for a team that had no championship contention as a result guys like mark gasol and serge Ibaka, hell even norman powell who if norman is a bit situational because his stock was so high you had to move him but either way it wasn't mismanagement no players were disgruntled they just wanted to play for championship contending teams. Hell, they even tried to trade Kyle Lowry and Kyle Lowry would have had nothing negative to say about Toronto. It's just ironic and unfortunate that a team that has championship aspirations isn't trying to capitalize on those championship aspirations, but that's just me. But with Toronto simply losing talent, despite having an excellent coach in Nick Nurse, one plus one is two, they got worse. They play basketball the right way. Nick Nurse has some of the best plays in the league and defensively don't even get me started. That team is well coached like shit. I don't even need to waste my time on on this again they just lost so much talent therefore the results have gone down the production has gone down and therefore the overall team success has gone down for the love of god shots that used to be pull up mid ranges from Kawhi leonard have turned into spin jumpers for spicy p okay but how do you fix it and i know it seems way too early for this segment of the video but trust me toronto has insane flexibility especially when it comes to teams in the series for example option one if it ain't broke don't fix it you think moves like trading for gary trent jr signing fred van fleet to a four-year deal, the development of OG and Anobi, whom you guessed it is also on a four-year deal. Toronto is literally doing what I say Cleveland should do. Bet on your future and sign your role players. Hell, maybe even your star players right now. If I'm wrong about this, cool, but I bet you right now they're going to re-sign Gary Trent. People are going to say, oh my God, that's an overpay. And then three years later, they're going to be like, Gary Trent's on a good deal. But from my perspective, at least Toronto is already trying to do what they've already done in the past. Waiting on the right free agent or waiting for the right player to become a available and even if it's just for one year you're live again and if it's a free agent you're live for four because dud be a max player and the ironic thing about this is with all the other teams you could easily argue oh but sage they're not gonna do that they suck but toronto is a well-run franchise they have one of the best coaches and one of the best gms in the league i and i'm pretty sure many of you would agree that it's the safer assumption to assume they do it right we're talking about a franchise that almost had 60 wins with demar de rosen and that was before he became a good playmaker all i'm saying is when the raptors look deep as hell again acquire some star player trade for the front quarter whatever pieces they don't have yet and make a serious playoff push within the next three to four years don't be shocked in fact the only way this plan could go awry is if they don't acquire said star player and let me amend that either a a superstar player or be a player that can carry your team to a championship because if they get just a star player they're going to be that same team with demar DeRozan leading it or kyle lowry that's not even the point shut up in which the team will win a lot of games in the regular season the team will go far in the playoffs but when they run into a great player it's up let alone great players. But I think Toronto knows that as well, and that's not even me assuming they're great. As I hinted not even 20 seconds ago, they literally just went through that. They saw the difference with a team with Kawhi Leonard versus a team with DeMar DeRozan. This is likely what Toronto does, and to be honest, it's probably what I would do as well. But like I said, they're really flexible, and there's many things they could do. Like option two, in which they could take a step back. And even though I said earlier option one is likely what Toronto is going to do, and that might be what I do anyway, this is very tempting to me because I'm not gonna lie, Pascal C. 
Siakam, you gotta go. Look, y'all, I was never a fan, not even in the finals, not even in the playoff run. Nope, never a fan of Pascal Siakam. And I do not hate Pascal Siakam. I'm not being that guy right now. But considering the money he's making and considering the role that he has, when you compare that to his actual talent, I don't know how people aren't disappointed and or upset. A lot of people are gonna say he's a good defender or whatever. I think he's okay. A lot of people are gonna say he's a good shot creator. I think he's okay. I'm not gonna hold you. He not a good finisher. I ain't going. The nigga makes 55% of his layups. And let me turn up. I'm not giving you shot creation either because his handle isn't that good and he makes 32% of his jump shots. In terms of being a star player, y'all call him Spicy P. No cap the nigga hot garbage. Just telling it how it is, my nigga. Like he should not be the number one, number two, or even number three option. I'm not saying he's a complete shitter. I believe you can still get a first round pick if not two picks for him. But in terms of being a number one and or number two option, oh yeah, he's a shitter. Oh, but Sage, look what he did with Kawhi. Hey Siri, what's an anomaly? Here's what I found from yourdictionary.com. The definition of an anomaly is a person or thing that has an abnormality or strays from common rules or methods. Oh yeah, that's definitely Siakam in the finals. Thank you. Look, if you want to ignore what he's doing right now, what he did in his last playoff run, and ignore the fact that there was really nobody on that Warriors roster in said finals, you got that shit, my nigga. If you believe in Spicy P, cool. But in this scenario, I'm packing him up for sure. I might pack him up in both scenarios. Lowry, we gonna pray that we can pack you up in a sign and trade. Go and miss you, though. And even with massive downplay, that's still a good three to four first round picks. The Raptors make 50 mil right then and there. They can go stupid in free agency. Then you have a draft to look forward to or potentially draft picks to trade. And at worst in two years, you're right back. And then option three is, of course, the obvious tank. But here's the thing. I don't recommend the Raptors to tank at all. A lot of times in these basketball rebuild conversations, simple PR is ignored. It's already one thing to give your fans the finger and tell them, oh, well, you'll be all right, bro. We'll be good in five years. And that possibly not even be the case. But it's another thing to look at a very talented staff and tell them, nah, bro, we're going to lose games. This isn't fucking 2K. These are human beings with actual jobs that they will lose if they do not perform. And if they do lose said job, having all those losses on your record is not going to help you get hired. That shit fucks with their source of income, their livelihood, let alone their NBA resume. Oh, but Sage, they could just ensure that they keep their job. Okay, but can you ensure that they want to stay for it? It's not easy to convince convince mass groups of people to lose for years, let alone lose when they know they could win. It would also ruin the reputation of, hey, the Raptors have good management around the league. Players know that if you play with Masai and Nick Nurse, you're going to play smart basketball and you're going to be taken care of. Hell, it's not LA or anything, but you're in fucking Toronto. My nigga, you're living good if you go to the Raptors. For the Raptors to then just stop giving a fuck, sully that reputation, and lose on purpose would be backwards as hell, especially from a management perspective. And then in terms of your roster or Again, why? It's one thing to sign and trade Kyle Lowry and trade Pascal Siakam. I'm not acting like Fred is a superstar or anything, but why would you trade him? I'm not saying he's untouchable or anything, but when you consider his talent, he's on a good contract. A really good contract, low key. Yes, he's light skinned with a beard, but in my opinion, a two way guard, even if you don't like his defense, okay, he's an offensive weapon. Who, yes, he may have no finishing ability whatsoever, but he can shoot 37% from three on nine threes a game. And if some of you are gonna size Pascal in the finals, you damn well better size Fred. Even if the trade is like a Norman Powell for Gary Trent Jr. type trade. I still don't know if you do that because that's kind of redundant to me. The whole point is to get a guy like Fred on a long-term deal. Oh, but Sage, you're overrating Fred. I'm not some Fred Van Fleet stan. I don't really care about Fred that much. You know, calm your tits. I'm not out here defending him, not trying to overrate him by any stretch of the means. I just don't see the logic in trading him considering his production and what the objective of trading him is to accomplish anyway. Like I just said, trading him for young talent is redundant and why would you want a low first for Fred Van Fleet oh yeah spoiler alert you're not getting a high first for Fred Van Fleet I just feel whenever a team sucks everyone's mind goes to tank 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 when that's just the Raptors doing way too much for no reason especially when option four is right here tell Kyle Lowry to go to Magic City and make your team some money would Lou Williams tip Kyle Lowry that's gonna do it for today's video it's been your boy TSO Sage if you guys like the video like the video if you like my content subscribe why the fuck you watching my shit and you're not subscribed it's been your boy TSO Sage I'm gonna highlight y'all Tomorrow, take care and stay blessed. Young Venom, yeah, I got the cannon. If a nigga talk too much, I gotta blame him. I wonder where the hate come from. Gotta be a dumb dumb undercover someone. You one of my children? Is it the paper, the moolah, the haters, the rumors, the leaked news of me and your shorty and Kama Sutra? I might just shoot you. Guns blazing, my little Ruger. It's not a blooper. In the Honda, I just maneuver. Italian spot where they serve my fettuccine. Make sure my linguine is super steamy and not too creamy. Toasty panini, couple bites of tortellini. I'm feeling dreamy, phone buzzing, she wanna see me. On my
my way to the midi, you know the vibes roll. My drip is hydro, big waves up in my tie though. I'm in the Tahoe, big body Uber on time ho. While me and my driver talking bullshit, smoking tobacco. <laughs>